Hey everyone, it's Clint. Welcome to Sweet Cast. I want to talk about this. It's not frequently that you see comic book content being created anywhere, really, <laughs> for that matter. What I mean by that is uh, it, there's a big recycling bin of content. Most of the time there will be actual news that comes out about comic books. It'll then make it to news sites, then it'll make it to YouTube channels. And then maybe new sites will make more content based off those YouTube channels. And it's sort of just this big circular motion, like, like water <laughs> uh, swirling around the drain. Uh, but every once in a while, it's been a long time though, there'll be an article comes out that's fresh and new. That's not talking about news. It's just talking about comic book content. Uh, it, it's kind of crazy. So this is on Newsarama. And what else is interesting about this is, is uh, Mark Wade has been super quiet for, it, it seems like a very long time, but he was actually interviewed here in this article. And uh, it is all about an editor and what exactly an editor does. Uh, because I, I would even go to say that I think they're even less appreciated than the letterer sometimes, which is, which is interesting. Uh, so we're going to get into this story before we do, though. Here's a little sneak peek. Clint Stoker's Dracula coming to Indiegogo tomorrow, Wednesday. I'm going to be launching in the morning. Um, it'll be 9 a.m. ish, maybe 9.30, between 9 and 9.30 a.m. Mountain time. So that's what? 11 to 11.30 Eastern time is about when we're going to launch. And really looking forward to this, guys. Uh, it's been a ton of work. If you back on day one, you're going to get a foil copy uh, this will be the kelsey shannon cover but it's going to be a foil uh a card a trading card in foil only for day one backers that is it so i would back day one if at all possible so you can get that two great covers uh fantastic story donald delay crushed the artwork so he's so versatile with his artwork uh, i have a lot to say about this but i will say about it when i'm streaming uh tomorrow so tune in uh please do back the campaign and we will get into it. All right, what does an editor do? Um, I've used editors myself at different, to different capacities. Uh, on Dracula, I actually hired an editor to sort of work on story content early on. And Dracula was, it was a tough nut to crack because I know that a lot of people uh, have a lot of expectations for what Dracula ought to be. And so I wanted to do a cool story. And part of that was having an editor uh, that helped me out early on in the process helped me really all throughout the process. And so it's, it's interesting. I've also hired editors just to help me make sure, um, you know, everything makes sense. And then of course, beyond that hiring editors that are strictly there to make sure that there's, you know, grammar, uh, spelling, all that stuff is, is, uh, good. Those are all important, but editor is such an umbrella term, even in mainstream comic books. Uh, that I did think it's it's kind of interesting. So here's the first quote here. This is from Tom Brevoort. Uh, he says, the descriptive I use when talking to our younger editors or people in general is that being the editor is like being the coach or manager of a sports team, says Tom Brevoort. I don't go on the field and play the game, but I get to decide who does. I can call particular play, call particular play, bring in a pinch hitter. And ultimately it's my job to make sure that everyone gets to the game ready to play every month. I'm going to stop you there, Tom. Uh, this is massively important. And I would actually think of this as almost like a producer or a casting director. If you're going to compare this to film, uh, when you're making your own comic books, in my case, uh, I take this role. I don't hire somebody to pick out talent and decide who is going to do what that is fully my decision. And so as the writer, I'm also taking on this particular aspect that editors can do, uh, in, in, for other publishing companies. And that's picking the talent, making sure you have the right people for the right project. And that'll make a massive difference in the outcome of, you know, how, what the comic actually ends up being. It's so heavily based on who's working on it. Uh, okay, so we'll go on next here. This is Bark Wade's two cents on an editor. He says, to my mind, the editor's job is to help you tell your story in the best way possible. I'm going to stop Wade right there and say, this is an interesting concept because 
Uh, it's hard to know sometimes when you're reading a book, is it the editor that's going in and deciding what a story should be about? Or is it the writer and the editors just there to hone their story? And I think it's uh, it, it happens both ways uh, frequently. And sometimes editors will tell you to add in stupid stuff, just absolute garbage for any other reason other than story. Maybe even as, as, as silly as they want to make their mark on the book. And so they're going to add something into it. Um, in this case, Wade says that an editor is there to help the writer tell the writer's story. Uh, he's going to continue on. He says, what I need is an editor who's going to tell me this is not on the spine. I've never heard that term before. Or you're not landing this beat. A good editor will do that. And a good editor will not tell me to put in a scene with a dog. That's stupid. Um, I'm going to add to that, though, because how stupid is it to say, hey, add a dog to this scene or hey, this should be a female character instead of a male character, uh, or hey, this should be, you know, whatever superficial characteristics should be changed just because. Like, it's just as stupid to change those kinds of things when they have no bearing on the story itself. Right? There's another huge distinction to be made in what editors do, largely dealing with who the editor works for. Now, there's, there's a concept uh, let's see, who's who am I quoting here? Uh, I don't know. We'll just read it. Mainstream superheroes are different than indie books or image books, says Rob Levine. That's who I'm quoting, Rob Levine. Uh, he says, when you're working on established intellectual property, there's an expectation of who the characters are and where the universe is headed and so on. When you work on an independent book, it's more creative. Uh, part of that is because there's just all that history that you have to stick to. Uh, I think things have loosened up on this so much so that continuity is just not, it's just not what it used to be in comic books. Uh, but for example, right now, my longest running series is Downcast. And that would be one, if I hired new writers to tell stories in the Downcast universe, and it was started to develop like a Marvel universe or DC universe, I would have to be really on it to make sure that everybody is sticking with the plan and that you're, you know, everything's moving in the correct direction. There's a bigger plan uh, to be had uh, and to be followed. I, I don't know if that's for me, honestly. I'd rather just write it myself. Uh, let's see. Uh, next quote here. Sometimes you're a springboard. Sometimes you're a shepherd, he says. You're giving story notes, art notes, maintaining continuity, managing what you need the project to be. You're there to be the glue that holds everything together and to keep the trains running on time. Now, some of this, I'm going to, I was stopping there. I'm going to interrupt. Some of this is uh, simply logistics. It's about making sure that people turn in their pages on time to make sure that scripts are turned in on time. Uh, having an editor leaning on you is helpful. I was hired... Uh, I, I, yeah, it's public information. I was hired by Matt Fowler to do a story that was super fun to write. Uh, I had so many other projects going on that I kept putting it back, putting it back. And at some point he had to lean on me and say, Hey Clint, how's the script going, man? We're ready for you for this, for this script that helped me get it done. Uh, because I'm talking to somebody about it and there's the, this level of accountability. I mean, it was not major, Matt was totally cool about it doing, I mean, he honestly could have been a lot harder and, and would have been in his right to be uh, harder on me. Uh, but it, it's one of those things that, um, yeah, again, getting books done on time, that can be a really important job for an editor in that uh, context. Uh, I'm skipping down. I'm just reading quotes here, guys, because that's basically all it is. All right, here's the next one. We need an, an adult supervisor uh, by that, I mean, we need logistical support as creative people. Hickman said this is from Hickman. Uh, I'm pretty organized, but I'm incapable of handling all the logistical stuff myself simply because there are only so many hours in the day. But let me stop uh, Jonathan Hickman there. Th this can't be understated. There's one reason, you know, you look at independent comics and you say, well, why can't you put out books at the rate that these big major publishers are putting books out? Well, keep in mind that these are much more, much smaller teams. Uh, and a lot of the time it's the writer that's actually moving everything along and making all those logistical things happening happen 
and you're in charge of marketing the thing too. So it becomes very difficult uh, to move a, a book along by yourself and make sure everything's happening that needs to happen. Uh, it, it's, it's difficult. It's awesome though. It's fun, but it does take time. That's the point. All right. Uh, let's see. Moving on to the next one. Steve is also a very strong, a very strong story wise. I don't know what Stevie's talking about. We're just going to keep moving anyway. Uh, and that's the real benefit of having someone like him around Hickman says, Oh, that's his editor. Uh, he can do all the things I'm deficient at. And on top of that, take the thing that you're already good at and make it better. Sounds like a fantastic editor. Uh, I don't know who Steve is, but we'll, we'll just go with it. Uh, next, we're moving into Howard Shaken. Uh, here's a quote here. I always feel that I need to have someone present to question my first instinct. Ooh, that's interesting. I have a great deal of confidence and faith in myself as both a writer and an artist, but like everyone else, I have the need uh, the need to be accountable. Again, there's that word. I brought it up earlier. Here, Howard Shaken's bringing it up, and that is being accountable to an editor. Uh, your first instinct, uh, sometimes you think a joke lands and running it by an editor, an editor is going to tell you, man, that's not funny, or that's very funny, keep it, or hey, I know you wanted to make this suspenseful, but it's just not. You got to change something. There's any number of things, and that's because it's a, when you're writing it, you're that close to it. You have all these assumptions of how it's going to work and play out. Having an editor that can just be honest with you, and by honest, I mean, it's not that they're going to change it for the sake of changing it or to put their mark on it. It's that they're going to give you actual feedback. If it works, they're going to tell you. If it doesn't work, they're going to tell you. That's huge. Uh, moving on here. Uh, Thomas is a very, a very astute reader. Thomas is a, another editor. Shaken says, I've often said that every idea he has costs me time and money, but at least 70% of those, 75% of those ideas are worth acting on. It's a perfect relationship for me. Again, I'm going to stop you here. Uh, editors are not, and in my opinion, should not be the last say. If you're hired to write something, it is your story. And so uh, like you should have veto power unless you're messing with, uh, you know, IP. If you're messing with Spider-Man, obviously the editor is going to have more say than the writer, uh, just, you know, depending on what's going on. Um, in any other circumstance, it really is the writer's story. And so, uh, editors, I think sometimes can take it too far, which is why you get some weird stuff happening in mainstream comics. Uh, and you know, writers should listen. They should be mature enough to listen because that that's, that's what being a good writer is about. You've got to be willing to sacrifice it if it sucks. Uh, and next quote here, the note that I consistently got from editors was you need to show them using their powers more. Oh, look at that show. Don't tell. He says, and that note is perfectly in line with how I think and act because the least interesting thing to me about the comic book is guys with rays coming out of their eyes, but it's an important maintenance factor to the characters. My belief system is that once you take the King's coin, you are there to do his job. I'm going to stop you there. That, that is uh, that's a good point. You might think <laughs> that certain superheroes have lame abilities, but that's why people came to read it. You might be sick of the same old Peter Parker, but your your readership is not. That's who they came to read about. Th that's what they want to see. And yes, those superpowers. Uh, he continues, it is a client relationship to me, and the editor's job is not to be your friend or colleague but to be the conduit from you to that corporation for better or for worse. All right. Uh, next quote here. This is from Tom Brevoort. He says, like so many things in this business, it's a, it's symbi it's a symbiotic relationship. When you're the editor, you're both the face of the company in dealing with the creators and the advocate for the creators in dealing with the company. So it goes two ways. Uh, if you're in indie comics, there's no company. <laughs> you're the company. So they're, you're accountable to them. They're accountable to you, which is weird. Probably not the best situation uh, because maybe you're going to bully the, the editor too much and not listen. Uh, or I don't know. They're just going to tell you what you want to hear because you're paying the bills. I'm not sure. Uh, continuing on here. I tell our younger editors that the most important thing they do every week is make sure the guys get paid, he says. It's very easy 
in the crush of doing the 10 million things that everybody has to do uh, to lose sight of the fact that this is not just filling out a spreadsheet. It's somebody's mortgage or food. Once you get paid, yeah, talent likes to have an advocate. Uh, what I'm looking for is an editor at Marvel or DC, uh, editor at Marvel DC, who is someone who will fight for you inside the company, fight for your ideas, says Jonathan Hickman. They got to trust you, man. Again, this is not a problem if you're working in, in independent comics and there's not a corporation that you have to fight or you need someone to fight for you to get there. That's an interesting problem to have. <laughs> um, in indie comics, you're fighting for sales yourself. You're fighting to get the word out. And hopefully an, a good editor will help spread the word too and, and fight for you in that way. Th that would be interesting. All right, continuing on here. You have to understand that at Marvel or DC, your editor is part of a giant hierarchy, hierarchy that its own, has its own rules. You want them to fight for you, but you've got to recognize their role and make it easy for them, yada, yada, yada. Uh, same, same old picture we've seen from Mark Wade for years. This, I just associate this with lawsuits and GoFundMes. Um, let's see, uh, moving on here as an editor, you have to be able to explain why something bothers you. I'm going to stop you there. That's huge. Saying something that something doesn't work in a story is one thing. Uh, the other end of the spectrum is saying, Hey, this story needs to be fixed this way. And you're already prescribing exactly what needs to happen in that story. This is the best route. If an editor can tell you that it doesn't work and explain why it doesn't work, then the writer can decide how to solve that problem. But the why being able to identify the why, you know, why was this not scary when it was supposed to be scary? Why did you see this coming? Why was it so obvious? If you can do that, that is going to make you a fantastic editor. Uh, let's see. Uh, moving on here. Pick your battles. An editor who wants to die on every hill is just an idiot. That's right. You, you, not every single little thing can an editor be in charge of, nor should they. That You might as well write the book then at that point. Um, not only will you make the creator crazy, but... Uh, you'll be there until midnight every night. You got to move on. Uh, adaptability. Holy crap. This article just goes on and on and on and on. And we're not going to go through the whole thing, but I did find it interesting to hear some insight on editors. Most of the information here though, really is for working for the big two, maybe, maybe a few other publishers. Uh, if you're working in indie comics, consider how an editor can fight for you, make your story better, make you accountable you know, as a creator, uh, in an honest way, you know, if you can find an editor that can do this, that's, that is fantastic. Anyway, let me know what you think of the comments below. Clint Stoker's Dracula is live on Indiegogo tomorrow. Be sure to get in and back it on day one. Uh, you're not going to regret it. It's a hardcover book. And it is going to be, yes, $25. Uh, and yes, I'm doing a PDF version as well. Uh, I'm going to polish all these things off, make sure this campaign is ready. Appreciate your support. And I'll see you tomorrow for the launch of a brand new book.